Well, I've got the old 300 SD looking a little bit better than when I first acquired it. Uh, you can see I've done some cosmetic things on it just to give me the inspiration to keep going on this car. But the next phase of restoration is to do a safety inspection. And we're going to focus on brakes. We're going to focus on shocks. Uh, th things that are going to make the car uh, more safe to drive. And that would include, you know, tires and things like that. But uh, one of the reasons, one of the reasons I was able to get this car for $300 was the, uh, the owner had, had, was experiencing this kind of clunking noise, grinding clunking noise in the rear end. And he took it into a shop and they said it was going to be about $900 to fix it. They said there was something wrong with the rear end. So when I drove the car, I heard the noise. And I, you know, I didn't know what it was, but I, it, it went away. As soon as you got over 10 miles an hour, it just went away. And it didn't seem to be related to brake pedal pressure or turning the car, which is sometimes um, that can indicate an, a rear axle problem. But I got to looking at this, and particularly this, this right side rear wheel. Take a look at this. Have you ever seen an aluminum alloy wheel all rusty? Now, if you know the difference between ferrous metal and aluminum, you know aluminum's not, not supposed to get rusty. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, there's something going on here. There's, that's not normal at all. And I thought this would be great to show you this up close because if you see something like this, after you watch this video, you'll, you'll know what you need, to, you need to go after. I originally just wanted to pull this wheel off and paint it so it wouldn't look so ugly. But I came in here and, and tried to do a little cleaning and I'm thinking, look at that, that won't even clean up. It won't even come off. And that's not brake dust. That's not brake pad dust. And then I started poking around in here, look at this. That's a chunk of rust. How in the world am I getting rust buildup? Look at this, right in here. Flaking rust on the inside of this aluminum alloy wheel. And it's everywhere, and it's really embedded. You can see that I'd, I'd have to take some really good sandpaper to this to even clean this up for getting it ready to repaint. And you can look up here at the top, you can see the flaking up there. So whatever is going on in behind this wheel is creating uh, some sort of uh, ferrous metal to get on the aluminum. I'm going to pull the wheel now and let's look behind and see what we find. Just take a look at this rotor. I have never seen anything this bad. We're talking about possibly a quarter inch of metal. If I put my fingers in and squeeze here, that rotor right in this location is only about an eighth of an inch thick. And so you can see that over time, and this, has to, this, ha this had to happen over a couple years, the owner drove this car and the metal kept wearing off the rotor and getting embedded on this alloy wheel, and that's what was causing the rust. Now, I'm, I'm con almost convinced at this point, I bet this right here is what was causing that clunking and grinding noise uh, that we were hearing at low speed. So the next step is we're going to pull this caliper. Why in the world would this wear so badly? Uh, is there something wrong with the pads? Uh, maybe, the, maybe the caliper's frozen? We're going to go ahead and investigate further, but let me tell you, if you ever see that rust staining, we're not talking brake pad staining, we're talking any kind of rust staining on your alloy wheels, I recommend that you remove the wheel immediately and inspect for excessive wear. That could be metal on metal wear between the rotor and the pads. Does anybody need a Frisbee? <laughs> That's not a Frisbee. That's part of the rotor. Can you believe that? You know, I said it was about an eighth of an inch. No, I didn't get my fingers down deep enough. When I took a hammer to wrap on this to free up the rotor from the hub, it broke. We're talking a sharp razor, a razor edge here. So can you imagine how much longer the owner would have driven this car before this came off? And that could, that's a very, you know, dangerous situation in terms of safety. And we're looking at, we're looking at pads that are non-existent, metal on metal contact. And then the reason for this, we look at this caliper up here. This caliper is seized, it's frozen. So I, you know, that's something you want to learn how to check. Learn how to check uh, for frozen calipers. I have a video available on YouTube that talks about how to test your brakes for frozen calipers. 
or dragging calipers. Obviously, this didn't happen in just 30 days. It didn't happen in 60 days. This was months of driving with a seized caliper. And you have to be really careful. These, these uh, rotors will get red hot. And I've actually seen front rotors because they're around oil from the engine and grease in the front suspension. I've seen front ends of cars catch on fire because the caliper was frozen and dragging, creating so much heat. A lot of times you can just come up and touch your wheel. If the owner would have suspected something, he could have stopped the car. And if he would have just touched this wheel, it would have been hot, it would have been really hot to the touch. So on, on back, but all these, if you overheat that rotor, you can ruin the tire, literally ruin the tire from the heat. So this is something you really have to be cautious about. Keep an eye on your brakes. There's no excuse for this. You see rust on your wheel, suspect metal on metal wear. And always, if you have alloy wheels, every once in a while, just look down in there. The owner would have seen all that scoring really bad scoring on the rotor and if you see that you want to do a further inspection so obviously with this car we're going to have to deal with the brakes i don't know how much of the brake system that's been neglected so i suspect we're going to see other issues we're going to go and inspect all the wheels we'll show you what one of the front ones looks like the other one on the rear here doesn't look that bad but we're going to have to do a brake fluid flush i'm sure it's been five ten years since the brake fluid has been flushed in this car so let's go take a look at the front wheel and we can kind of get an estimate of what we're going to need to do the brakes on this 300 SD. The brakes on the other three wheels actually look okay. Uh, you can see here that we've got a little bit of scratching and that's okay. You know, you, it's just going to happen. You're going to have a little bit of scratching in the rotor. What you're looking for is that deep gouging and deep wear points. The other thing you're looking for is an excessive amount of lip. If you get out here at the edge and it, it has a big lip, that is indicative of the fact that it's been wearing. There's a certain measurement you have to take on these rotors and below that they're no longer acceptable. Uh, if, you're not, you know, if you're not comfortable with making a decision like this on your own, you may need to take it to a brake shop uh, for inspection. A lot of these brake shops don't charge uh, for inspections, okay? Now there's a couple, couple other things going on here. You, you want to look at pads and the pads here, I'm looking right down in here, the pads here are almost three-eighths of an inch thick and that shows me that these front pads haven't been on this car all that long um, if the pad gets down to you know around an eighth of an inch that's when you should start considering changing it don't leave it on so long that the indicator light comes on on the dash sometimes if the pad doesn't wear evenly you may get an indicator light coming on even after one side of the pad starts scraping on the rotor and then you're going to have more expense. You're going to have to change the rotor as well as the pads. But as far as the other three wheels, um, I'm okay. I'm going to have to get a new rotor, a rebuilt caliper, and new pads and install it on that rear uh, hub. And then we're going to do a complete brake fluid flush. I'm going to inspect all these flexible hoses if I see any cracking. It, in fact, these look like they've been replaced. I, unless you have records that those flexible brake hoses have been replaced. When you're doing the brake inspection, the brake restoration on your old diesel, change those four hoses. They're not expensive. They can actually rot internally. They will affect the braking pressure, but worse yet, they act like a check valve. I've seen it where they'll push fluid through and when the fluid tries to come back, it won't let the fluid back and the brake will drag. The pads will actually drag because the caliper is not totally releasing. So these things rot internally. And that's why you, you pretty much on all these old cars, unless you know that they've been changed in the last five to 10 years, you want to change those four uh, uh, rubber brake hoses when you're doing your brake restoration. And we have everything, everything you need. I know some of you may not feel comfortable doing your own brake work, but it is something you can do and save hundreds. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars if you do this yourself on these old cars. Um, we have new rotors, calipers, we have pads, we have, we have equipment that can help you do it yourself. We have special bleeding equipment, capture tank bottles, and I have a number of manuals I've written on doing this type of work yourself. So when you, when you take on your brake work on your old diesel, you know, Mercedes Source can be a real source to helping you fix those, thing, those issues yourself. And just a taste of the next video, we're going to go on. We've, we've talked about brakes, 
uh, uh, brake restoration. We're going to get that done because that's really the number one safety issue. The other thing is shocks. People don't think of shocks as safety, but they do affect the handling of the car. And in a panic situation, swerving to avoid a car or heavy braking, shocks can be real critical in whether or not you survive not having an accident. So I consider shocks a real safety uh, issue. This shock here is leaking. You can tell it's leaking. It's been leaking fluid. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been leaking fluid. But I bet if I take the shock off, and that's really one of the best ways to test them, is just remove them. Um, once again, if you need shock absorbers, we have shocks with instructions. This is something you definitely can do yourself. We're going to go out and look at another car later while I'll show you how you can actually tell the shocks are bad by just doing some uh, testing on the car itself. And there's some other things going on. Look, I grab a hold of this and look at the play. Look at the play in the steering. So I've got some issues with uh, some of the steering rods and front suspension. I'm going to check uh, bearing play. That feels pretty tight, but these wheel bearings are an issue too on these cars because they get neglected. So I will pull the caps off. I'll check to see how, um, how the grease looks, how old the grease looks underneath. But a lot of times when you're doing the brake inspection and restoration, you want to inspect these wheel bearings. Now, once again, I, we have kits with special tools that will help you get the wheel bearings and the races replaced in your own hubs. So in the next video in this series, we're going to do a complete suspension inspection. Walk completely around this car underneath and look for any signs of components that will need to be fixed or replaced. Well, there you have it. It's fixed and it wasn't difficult at all. In fact, Parts counts probably about $125 or $130. You know, we bought a new, a new rotor. Once again, never, never seen anything this bad. And a rebuilt caliper. This caliper, once again, totally, totally seized up. And then, of course, a set of new pads. Have you ever seen a pad <laughs> that thin? So that gives you a pretty good idea what was causing all the problem. And it really is... Uh, um, a little discerning, a dis disconcerting, I should say, that the owner, the previous owner, did not bother to catch that or even repair it. And there's a couple lessons to be learned here. Number one, when you go to look at an old Mercedes diesel to purchase, don't always believe what the owner says about what is wrong with the car. Okay, I've seen this numerous times. Uh, sometimes you can win, sometimes you can lose. In this case, I won because. Uh, the reason he sold the car so cheap was he was spooked on the high repair, repair bill that the shop quoted him for some rear end work that was going to solve his noise problem. And it was, it was this right here. It was this rotor rubbing on those brakes. That, that Actually, you know, one of the things, uh, one, of the, one of the ways I, I detect rear end noises is when I drive the car, I hit the brakes. If you're hearing a grinding or a rumbling or a, kind of a scraping noise. If you hit the brakes, momentarily that will go away. Because as the caliper clamps down, you know, it stops whatever chatter, rattle, or, or thumping is going on if it's in the brake system. Not always, but most of the time. And when I test drove this car, I hit the brakes and the noise didn't go away. But the noise went away when I got up to speed. So I wasn't sure when I bought the car, you know, I bought it for so cheap anyway, I wasn't worried about a pre-purchase inspection. But I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't thinking brakes because of that little test I put this car to. But you see now why that test didn't work? Because the caliper was totally frozen. So when I hit the brakes, nothing was happening here and that rattle just kept, uh, kept on and it was, you know, the, that it was this metal, metal pad here rubbing against this rotor and rattling. And that was what was causing the problem. So, um, you know, when you, you may win sometimes. You don't believe the owner. And then a lot of times, you know, when you get these cars, you fix it yourself. Okay, that's the other lesson. You, you know, you fix it yourself, it makes it affordable. If you would have taken this into a brake shop, you know, and you didn't really know what you were dealing with. It could, they would have replaced all the brakes and you would have ended up with six to $800 repair bill. So that's another thing. Um, you know, if you're gonna own one of these old diesels, you better learn to fix it yourself.